There are 40.3 million Chinese living outside of mainland China. How many do you think live in Africa? Anyways, here are the Chinese of Africa. Like, subscribe, and share, please, to help us. Thanks and enjoy. In recent times, the world has been suspicious about China's relationship with African countries, but it's just a new chapter in a tailored history between the two. First contact between China and Africa dates back to 200 BC, during the Qin Dynasty. As time went on, more contact was established as a group of East Africans arrived in China in 1071. One of the first settlements of Chinese in Africa can be seen in Kenya, Somalia, and Zanzibar. In Lamu Island, off the coast of Kenya, there are stories of 20 shipwrecked Chinese sailors with 400 survivors who were permitted to settle on the island a long time ago. They changed their religion and married some local women, and their lineage is still alive today. Then, during the age of colonization, China began political relations with African countries, providing aid and infrastructure and exchange, relations which have only grown today. It's obvious that first contact would have happened on the east of Africa due to its position on the continent. But with modernization, West Africa eventually got into contact with China. The country with the largest population of Chinese is South Africa, with about 400,000 of them. The first settlers to the country were actually prisoners exiled from the Indies in the 1660s. But as time went on, the Chinese population grew in the late 1800s, with most of them looking to make profit from mining. But as always, segregation prevented them from excelling. Then in the 1900s, more Chinese arrived in South Africa as indentured miners. They, like Indians and the native Africans suffering from discrimination during apartheid, were classified as coloreds. During the post-apartheid era, the Chinese population in the country grew, and there is even a Chinatown in Johannesburg, which is common throughout the world at this point. Their presence is felt in South Africa to the point that a law for affirmative action only applies to Chinese who have been citizens of South Africa prior to 1994. Another country with a high number of Chinese is Mauritius, yet their history in the country is more complicated. The first Chinese settled in the 1740s, and these people were forced there by the French to work. But after a revolt, they were returned to their native lands. Then 40 years later, another group of Chinese voluntarily arrived on the shores of Port Louis and labored as carpenters, blacksmiths, taking other menial jobs and they intermarried with the locals of the land because they were denied from bringing their family members if they did not renounce their citizenship. They continued to migrate to Mauritius even into the 1900s. However, due to the economical strain of accepting these migrants, many of them relocated to South Africa and Madagascar. Today, it is a country with the most influential Chinese population as they control most of the trade and wealth in the nation. In neighboring Madagascar, many Chinese came as free migrants, opened shops and married Malagasy women, and today control the textile industry in the country. They sit at about 100,000. However, they have a strained relationship with motherland China as the new settlers are undercutting their prices. In most of the other countries, the migration of Chinese happened in the 90s due to increased political relations. Hence, many of the Chinese currently on the continent are expatriates and they usually amount to tens of thousands in most countries. On the minority side of things, there are only a handful of Chinese in other countries like Libya, where there are only 340 of them from 35,000 due to the civil war, or places like Burkina Faso and Liberia, where there are less than a thousand Chinese. It's also worth knowing that though there is a big population in Africa, the relationship between the Chinese and the locals of the countries they reside in may engage in tense or strained relationships. For example, in Senegal, it's known that the Chinese isolate themselves in communities and mainly only engage in business purposes, while in countries like Malawi, they are sometimes a target of xenophobic attacks. A result of historical Chinese migration to Africa is the establishment of many Chinatowns in Africa. You can see them in Johannesburg, Lagos, Window, Nairobi, Madagascar, and Port Louis. On the opposite end of the exchange, there are many Africans living in China, about half a million to be exact. Most of them are from Ghana, Nigeria, Mauritius, Kenya, and Sudan, with students being a significant part of the population. This has made China the biggest hosting nation for African students in the world. Like the equivalent happenings on the African continent, Africans in China face discrimination. They intermarry, especially with the Chinese women, and they have their own community, even though recently stricter immigration laws has reduced the population over the years. The population of Chinese in Africa will only grow, and regardless of the calls of neocolonization due to the loans, we cannot ignore the contributions made by Chinese and Afro-Chinese on the continent and in China. Though Afro-Chinese may face different levels of issues due to their looks, they still make a great addition to the diversity of the continent. And if you are Chinese and currently live in Africa, or an African in China, or an Afro-Chinese, let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Will we see you in the next one?